Hello, my name is Greg Reynolds, and the video you are about to see is how the linesmen and other crew members work and communicate with the chain crew. First thing I would like to touch on is crew professionalism. Professionalism begins once you make contact with the school, whether it's by email, phone, or regular mail, and it ends when you leave the game site. What I will be talking about it in this section is the professionalism once you leave the locker room. This is the only chance you have to make a first impression with the people in the stands that have come to watch. Whether you are working a class 1 game with 200 people watching, or a class 5 or 6 game with four to 5,000 people in the stands, you are being observed. The professionalism that you exhibit when you leave the locker room to walk to the field will be the first chance you have to make an impression on those people. While walking to the field, speak to those people that you know or speak to you, and be courteous but do not stop and talk. It is important that no bias can be perceived by your actions. You also need to make your way to the field so that your crew can begin to inspect the field and the line to gain equipment. If you shake hands or stop to speak with a coach, staff member, school administrator, or team trainer, always make sure you make yourself available to shake hands and or speak with the other team staff members. Field preparation is something that should never be taken for granted. To do this properly ensures the safety of all participants, including the officiating crew. This can possibly turn into a liability issue in the instance of an injury. If there are any problems with the field or field equipment, then the home school administrator should be notified. Items that can be fixed should be taken care of, and those that cannot will be played with as is as long as it's not a safety issue. However, be sure to write a special report so that the state administrator and school administrators respond to those concerns. In most cases, the crew will enter the field in the end zone, and this is where the field inspection begins. The crew breaks according to the mechanics book and begins to walk the sideline that is opposite the side that they will eventually work on or walk captains out on. As the officials continue to walk the field, the next focus is the sideline and the yard line markers. This is done so that each official will be aware of any obstacles or problems along the sideline. The yard line markers should be moved far enough away from the sideline so that they will not be tripped over and the officials need to make themselves aware of the coaches and players box to see if they are properly marked. If the conditions on the sideline are crowded, then all officials should be aware of this. The end zone pylons will be checked to ensure that they are properly placed at the four corners of each end zone marking the out of bounds lines and one yard behind the back line to signify the inbounds mark. The goal post should be properly padded and in place and have a proper height. Also the end zone itself should be checked to ensure that there are no illegal markings in it and advise game management if there is such a case. Each official should examine the end line and the goal line to ensure the color and that there is just one line. If the possibility of any discrepancies then each crew member will discuss this when they pass in the opposite end zone. The nine yard marks should be roughly measured to ensure proper distance from the sideline and the three yard extra point line should be measured also by the umpire. As the officials continue down the sideline there is usually plenty of time to stop and observe teams warming up. Observe players for proper equipment and uniform adornments. If any illegal equipment is observed or legal equipment improperly worn, the head coach should be notified. This is preventative officiating if we can catch it before the game starts. Illegal or improperly worn legal equipment is a safety risk and becomes a liability issue that we can eliminate if we catch it before the game. This extends to many of the duties of walking the field. Providing the equipment is out and on the sideline, it is at this time that any of the officials can inspect the chain equipment for functionality. Chains should be stretched to ensure that they are the proper 10 yard requirement from stake to stake. And the ends should be checked for any sharp ends. And 
and the chain should be inspected to ensure that it is properly attached to the stakes and that there are no kinks in the chain at any point. It should also be inspected that there is a five yard piece of tape on the chain to speed up the game and help with measurements. Once the officials reach the far end zone from where they entered, then all pertinent information should be communicated to all crew members that may have effect over the game. This should not take more than 15 minutes from the time they leave the locker room and should last at least 10 minutes. At this point, the crew should decide if there are any safety related issues that need to be remedied before the game can begin. Once information has been passed, then the crew members should continue walking to the sideline that they have not walked. It is at this time that the officials will look at the problems that have been pointed out and the wing officials should get the sideline markers where he wants them since this is going to be his sideline. This should take another five to seven minutes. The sideline officials will end on the sideline they remain on to begin the coin toss procedures. All field preparation duties should be done and the officials ready to watch the teams re-enter the field with five minutes before kickoff.